thanks, uh, thanks Marco for the introduction. Uh, yeah, I work as an Android developer for more than 10 years. Um, so sometimes I get the question, um, you should, uh, are you bored working on the same thing uh, for so many years or um, do you then know all the APIs by heart? But I think we all know here, you know, that uh, that's not the case because um, Google and the community makes sure we have always something to learn. And Jetpack Compose is, was, was, is the, the biggest change in the years. Um, so to start this off, uh, and since it's the first uh, Android meetup in Ljubljana, uh, we're talking about Jetpack Compose. Uh, can you raise your hands? How many of you already worked with Jetpack Compose? Okay. And how many of you have experienced uh, performance issues? <laughs> That's not that many. I didn't know what to expect. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's start. Um, and let's say that uh, you have just developed um, a new um, Jetpack uh, Compose uh, feature in your app. You're playing around with the app and it feels laggy. What's the first thing you do? Uh, first, run uh, your uh, app in release modes. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a general good practice in Android um, uh, because um, by running in release mode, you disable the debug mode, uh, which adds a, a huge um, performance hit. Um, by enabling us um, um, debugging the code and stepping in and uh, minifying um, R8 or previously known as ProGuard uh, is um, removing unnecessary code from the APK and optimizing it. Um, here's a graph I found on one of the Google's pages. It's, it will, of course, vary by case by case, uh, but just to give you an idea, um, rendering in milliseconds of uh, one view um, the biggest uh, jump down was after uh, removing uh, the bug mode, so re in running in release mode, and another one was after um, ProGuard was enabled. Altogether, 50% improvement. Uh, next up is updating Compose libraries. Um, actually, Google was quite, quite open with saying that um, performance was not their priority for Compose 1.0. Um, they are focusing on stabilizing the APIs, which, uh, which, which we can work on and they can work on. Um, so performance uh, updates are almost in every uh, release notes. Uh, next up is 1.5, which improves uh, text rendering and modifiers. Uh, they say they have improved text rendering by 22% in average. Um, we also often uh, take um, text for granted for something simple, but if you talk, if you listen to um, Android, um, Google developers, uh, it's quite a hard nut to crack. Uh, it's, um, text is everywhere and it's hard to render. Uh, next up is uh, check the roadmap in general. Uh, if there are any um, performance issues pending, or if there is a feature um, that you're missing. For example, I was uh, surprised um, recently that um, uh, sliders, um, um, scroll, scroll sliders are still not um, in Jetpack Compose by default. You can quite easily make them your own, but um, there's not just one flag to enable them and disable them. Um, why, why, why are those two steps important? Because um, if you don't have a performance issue and rather spend time on new features that will improve um, uh, the user experience of the app. And some performance improvements also affect our readability and um, maintainability of the, of the code. So find a balance. <coughs> um, with every problem, um, if we want to fix it, we need to understand what's going under the hood. Um, Compose has three phases that run on every frame. Uh, the first one is composition. Uh, what you had to show, that's the code in view rights and the compose, uh, compose fun functions. Uh, next, uh, next is the layout, where, where to place, place the UI. Um, we're talking here about um, the, the layout uh, components, um, the box, uh, row, uh, column, and so on, or, or maybe if you're using a modifier offset. And next is the drawing um, that, that uh, figures out how to render it. Uh, and, and render it, render it in, the, um, in the UI, in the display, in, on the canvas. Um, we will focus on the first one, uh, because this, this is it's the most important one, um, because we write the comp compose functions. 
Um, as I said, Compose uh, runs composable function that you write and creates a description of your UI. And the composition is just uh, when the, the data changes, it, it uh, runs the whole composition again. Um, and it tries to figure out uh, what has changed and tries to minimize all of those three uh, phases. They run on every frame, but Compose tries to be smart and skip whatever is possible. Sometimes it just needs uh, some of our help. Um, how do you know if um, um, your, your UI is just recomposing uh, too often? Um, you can use the Layout Inspector. You can find it under Tools um, and Layout Inspector. Um, I don't think there are any limitations um, uh, which Android uh, you, you need to run on, on your physical device or emulator. Uh, and it's available for quite some time from Android Studio Dolphin. Um, and how does that look? You may make the, the change in the UI, and in the first column, you will see the um, uh, recomposition count and if it was skipped, if it, if it was not needed to redraw on again. Um, what, what the layout inspector doesn't tell you is what, why uh, our composition happened. Um, so one way that I used uh, until recently uh, was a uh, composition debugger. It's a library, open source. Um, you tell the library which, um, um, which, com which parameters of the function you want to track, and it will print out uh, why uh, something was, uh, why the function was recomposed. Um, but uh, Google is also aware of um, this missing feature, and in the next uh, Android Studio, which is in currently in uh, Canary Alpha uh, stage, um, will um, contain um, the information about the uh, recompos recomposition state in the debugger. When you will um, add a debug point, uh, you will see uh, what has changed and what, what, what is still the same. Um, and if you still, still don't know why our composition um, happened, that means um, you need to, to check the com Compose compiler reports. Uh, you can ask the um, compiler uh, to return, to print out the, the reports. Um, this, is, this is how you, you tell, um, tell the, comp the, the compiler to do it. Um, the exact code, of course, varies uh, from project to project. Um, it can it depend. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's different if you have a single uh, module app or multi-module app. Uh, it will generate four files. Um, the first one is some overall stats, then a detailed output of each uh, function, compose function declaration. Um, the same in CSV format and stability information for classes. It is human readable, uh, but not very friendly to navigate. So that's how it looks. But thankfully, um, the uh, to awesome Android community, um, you can find um, some uh, parsers. Um, like the best one that I found is this one. It takes all the files and generates um, a great HTML to you can navigate. Here you will see some. Um, um, some data, like um, if, uh, if the parameters are stable, if the function is restartable and skippable. So let, let's see what does that, what does that mean. Um, skippable means that um, when, when, called, when a function is called during recomposition, Compose is able to skip the function if all of the parameters are equal with their previous values. So Compose tracks the, state, the status. While startable, uh, the function serves as a scope where a composition can start. In other words, this function can be used as a point of entry where Compose can restart KPA re-executing code for a composition after state changes. And what does immutable and stable means for parameters? Um, it indicates where the value of any uh, properties will never change after the object is constructed. Um, you can take, for example, data class, and all the methods are, are uh, referentially transparent. Um, all, also, all primitive types are considered immutable. And stable indicates a type is mutable, but the compose runtime run will be notified if any, uh, if and when any pro public properties or methods in behavior would yield different results from previous invocation. 
So now, basically, we already mentioned um, the, the stability. Um, all the, the, the parameters that you pass to the uh, composable functions, um, um, the, the, the classes, uh, the classes need to have all public parameters uh, stable and immutable. Uh, not stable are var and list and map um, because there is no guarantee they are immutable. So instead of that, use primitive types or data classes or classes uh, where all the public parameters are stable. And um, instead of just list and map, use um, use immutable collections from Kotlin X um, that have um, immutable list, immutable set, immutable map. Um, it's easy to, to map to, to them. Um, there is an um, ongoing issue. We will aware of it. It's already on the roadmap. Uh, classes from other modules are, are not stable, so the the compiler does not cannot figure out if they are stable or not. Um, for example, if you have a data class, a data module, and uh, you, you want to use it directly in in your UI module, um, the the, part, the classes will be um, unstable. Um, you have three workarounds. Uh, one is to create a new class in your UI module and make a mapper, or annotate the class with um, add stable, or enable uh, compose uh, compiler um, in your build um, .verify. file. What about lambdas? Um, not all lambdas are stable. For example, on your left, you can see an example. Um, where, uh, because we are passing uh, in, into the Lambda, the view model, which is outside, um, this code will be actually compiled into an anonymous class with parameter. And so on every position, um, the, the compiler will, th will, will think this is a new parameter and it will force a recomposition. One solution is um, to use to use this style of, uh, of lambda, if you um, if you have just uh, one parameter that you're passing in, and if it matches um, the lambda. But of course, here's again the, the thing that I mentioned before. Sometimes it's readable, sometimes it's, it's not, and or not even possible. Um, I intentionally uh, not explained everything about the restartable and skippable functions. I think um, it's better off if you watch the, the talk from the creator, um, the, the main developer of uh, Compose. Uh, he can explain better in 40 minutes than I can do. Um, but uh, the point here is that should we chase 100% stability, 100% restartable functions? Google says no. It's preliminary optimizations, optimization, so don't do it if it's not necessary. Um, my other tips for performance. Um, reducing the number of recomposition is equally important as uh, having a fast composition. So your uh, com composable functions should be um, as fast as possible. Um, there is actually, actually no need to, to, to reason to have um, expensive operations in your composable functions. If they don't fit into the UI. Um, if you look at the, the architecture, um, but if you cannot avoid them, uh, use the remember. Um, this will um, this will force uh, this will make sure that um, the calculation uh, will only happen if the input data changes. So here's one example. Uh, instead of uh, instead of sorting uh, every time every recomposition, use remember uh, and do just do it just once. Uh, lazy layout keys. Um, it, you can use them uh, with uh, lazy column and lazy row and so on. Um, it, it's not mandatory, and that's why I also think uh, we often overlook them. Um, but they, they provide um, smart reuse of the items. Um, for that, uh, your key needs to be stable, uh, unique, otherwise it will crash, and it needs to be saveable into bundle, so everything almost works like um, string, int, uh, load, and so on. Um, because the default key position uh, is uh, the default key is position, it is integer, and um, we will now also see an example how that affects the composition. Uh, that's how you edit. So uh, 
in the, uh, by default, it's not necessary. You just uh, add a lambda uh, where you return the, your key. And that's one video of, from the uh, layout inspector. Uh, first, we will see um, without the key and then with, with it. I will add a blue item, and this add, this item will force the whole uh, all the items after the item to really compose because the the, the position um, is an, is the default key. And if we add um, a key, uh, which is the color name, all the items will be uh, the, the the compiler the code will be able to skip all the items um, that have not changed. So everything was skipped. You can see it in here. Um, another thing is limit recomposition. So if nothing changes, um, uh, uh, try to try to limit it. Um, uh, see it like uh, um, distinct uh, in your flows. Um, here we have an example um, where you observe um, the list state um, when the user scrolls, and um, if, uh, if the, the if it matches the condition, we show a button. So we, we, we know that uh, that will uh, not happen uh, that often. And uh, to, to limit the, the number of position, uh, we can just um, uh, surround it with remember and then drag data. Um, any other tools that you can use for performance? Um, baseline profiles, it's, it's a huge topic for another talk. Um, but use it when you notice that um, your initial rendering, when you start on cold start, it, it's lagging. Uh, yeah, as I said, on, on another talk, um, I was just mentioning it here, it's a cherry on the top after you have done everything else. And uh, another suggestion uh, is Twitter's Jetpack Compose rules. Um, they have rules for style, uh, code style, and performance. Our rules are comprehensively described, which I really liked. Um, they, they tell you what, what's wrong, uh, how can you improve it, and um, any other links. Um, they have uh, AT Lint and Detect integration. But unfortunately, because all the best have left Twitter, it's not maintained anymore. Yeah. Um, you have two alternatives. Um, the first one is direct successor um, from the uh, from the same team uh, from Twitter, and another one is from Zach. Um, he created uh, a link integration. And that's it from my side. I hope so I didn't scare anyone off with performance problems, because it's really working fine. Any questions? That I can answer. You have a question, I see you. I can ask you a question if you want. Uh, for lazy lists, um, like I noticed that sometimes, even if you go into the release mode and you try to scroll, there are like sometimes it stutters if you have like a pagination, something like that. Uh, so when it loads a new page, sometimes it stutters, sometimes it doesn't. But like with the recycler view, we didn't have that problem. But now with Compose, we need to check out like what exactly is the problem. Are you using the uh, paging library, Compose? Page three, yeah. Yeah, and it's still yeah. Not and we have like slight issues with that. But like ninety percent of the time it works, but like sometimes it doesn't. It's like, did you ever have like any issues with? With the lay, uh, lazy lists. No, but and have you done any of the steps I showed in the not yet. No? <laughs> okay, so try them out. Yeah, definitely. Maybe, maybe something is recomposing too much um, because it's not stable. Your parameters are not stable. Yeah, maybe it's that. Yeah. <laughs> but that was just a question. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Uh, I mean, this quick question, yeah. like, what was the hype? <laughs> <laughs> we know each other. Uh, what, was the, what was the hardest part, like, learning, right? I hate these rules. I mean, I don't hate them, but, like, you have to think about them, right? Like, that was the, like, what should I use 
to improve performance, so I should not have any issues in performance, etc. I mean, first of all, first one I think is a good architecture. If you're just using MUVM, uh, passing data classes uh, to your you, you, UI, you are almost done. Um, then uh, what I showed here, you can um, make sure that your parameters are stable. Um, uh, of course, again, data classes that, uh, from da data module that are stable. Um, that's mostly it. There's not m much you can do. And yeah, of course, yeah, limit um, what you do in the um, composable functions. Yeah, of course, yeah. Some say um, nothing more than an if um, statement uh, should be in, in the composable functions. Anything else should be higher or lower, how you see it in the architecture. Are you always using data classes and so Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. I will try that. Yeah. Well, one more thing to add, maybe, that I've figured out like in the like, last six months, is like that you should, I mean, make the composable as small as you can, because like, if before we had like one screen and then had like most of the composables like inside that, but after we just moved it to like their own functions with annotation and composable, it just started to work. Like before, they didn't, and now they don't. And now they do because the, it's smarter composition, right? Yeah, yeah. And so that's like one more thing you only pass like, what what you need. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Uh, do you have any more questions? Maybe just one yeah. that workflow lines, right? So. Uh, like, I imagine myself creating just the composables and maybe write, okay, IDs or the data best practice, but um, do you then just run, ignore until it's a problem, or do you immediately start optimizing? Like, where, where do you put the boundary into optimizations? When you see it, or do you immediately try to... When, when you see it and... Yeah, when where's that thin line? Yeah, that's my related question. Yeah, like, you have to think about like, is launch a pack or should I use it? No, okay. Uh, <laughs> no, also Google says if you see and can confirm the issue in, in the release mode, then start optimizing. Otherwise, otherwise, no. Otherwise, no. But yeah, of course, you have some general rules like don't do too much um, what's not needed in composable functions, um, use, use data classes to pass in. Just that should be enough to start off, not see any unnecessary issues. I have a question. Okay. Uh, so the classical one, uh, do Android OS versions cause any change? I mean, do you have noticed that on older devices, apart from that, say, suckier processors, less RAM, so I'm maybe not the best uh, person to, to, to answer this question because uh, our app uh, is um, minimum, minimum SDK is 8.0. Uh, oh, uh, so um, maybe on some older versions, uh, because also the, uh, the runtime is, is uh, worse uh, and uh, the devices have less memory, maybe you would see something. Um, but we don't, we don't notice any issues uh, between older and newer devices. They work equally. That's cool. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, some of us are told that we still <laughs> remember using TraceView in Eclipse. <laughs> uh, you mentioned a couple of tools that were introduced to Android Studio for profiling. Mm -hmm. Do you find them, like, are they good enough or is something missing that you would like for them to, to add to it? Um, I think um, Android Studio has made um, huge improvements in the profiling tools in the recent years. Um, so I'm still not uh, um, um, very used to the trace um, tool that is constantly improving. Um, the recomposition, the layout inspector works great actually. Um, so yeah, also the trace, uh, I have just used it once uh, to, to see what's going on, um, but it's way easier to, to use than it was in the time of stop eclipse and so on. Cool. That's it. All right.